What is a factorial and when is it used? Let's start off by explaining what exactly a factorial is by using a simple example. Five factorial. That's five followed by an exclamation mark. All this really means is five times four times three times two times one. And by multiplying all of those integers together, we get 120. It's really just that simple. So to generalize, if we were to take the factorial of a positive integer, it would follow this pattern. The factorial of n would be equal to n multiplied by n minus 1, multiplied by n minus 2, and so on until we end up with 1. Let's go back to the example of 5 factorial using the previously mentioned pattern. n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, times n minus 3, until we get to 1. So 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 5 minus 1, which is 4, times 5 minus 2, which is 3, times 5 minus 3, which is 2, times 5 minus 4, which is 1. So this is where we stop. So 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 equals 120. So basically, the pattern is just start with the integer and count backward by 1 until you reach 1 and then you stop. Before we go any further, there are two special cases to consider, which we won't go into details about in this video, but just keep them in mind for now. 1 factorial is equal to 1 and 0 factorial is equal to 1. Now that we are done with the theory, let's see how we can go about applying this in a practical example. Let's say you have a table that seats four people and you have invited four friends over for dinner, Anna, Brad, Charlie, and Donna. You know that some of your friends get along better with others, so you want to know how many different seating arrangements you can have between them. If we go the old fashioned route using a pen and paper, here are all the possible combinations we can have for those four guests. As can be seen below, with four guests, we can have 24 possible seating combinations. There is definitely an easier way to have figured this out by using factorials. Having four different guests would mean four factorial, which equates to four times three times two times one equals 24. Let's better understand what exactly is going on here by having a visual representation. If we only had one person, let's say Donna, and one chair, then we would have one factorial, which is equal to one, which means only one possible seating arrangement. That's one chair and one Donna. If we had two people and two chairs, then we would have two factorial, which is equal to two, which means Charlie and Donna will have two possible seating arrangements. If we had three people and three chairs, then we have three factorial, which is equal to six. Best way to visualize how we went from two combinations to six by adding one extra person is by keeping Brad fixed in one chair while performing the same steps we just did with the two factorial example. So let's keep Brad in the first chair and move Charlie and Donna between chairs two and three. As you can see, we have two different combinations with Brad fixed on chair one. Now, if we move Brad to the second chair and move Charlie and Donna between chairs one and three, we have another two combinations. And lastly, if we move Brad to the third chair and move Charlie and Donna between chairs one and two, we have another two combinations for a total of six. If we had four people and four chairs, then we have four factorial, which is equal to 24, and best way to visualize how we went from six combinations with three people to 24 by simply adding one extra person is by keeping Anna fixed in one chair while performing the same steps we just did with the three factorial example. So let's keep Anna in the first chair and Brad in the second chair and move Charlie and Donna between chairs three and four. With Anna in chair one and Brad in chair two, there are two possible combinations for Charlie and Donna with chairs three and four. We already determined that with Anna in chair one and Brad in chair two, we had two possible combinations. There's Anna, Brad, and Donna and Charlie alternating between chair three and four. Now, if we move Brad to chair three, we will have another two combinations. Lastly, if we move Brad to chair four, we will have another two combinations. 
This gives us a total of six different combinations with Anna still in chair one. We already determined that with Anna in chair one and Brad moving between chairs two, three, and four, we had six possible combinations. If we moved Anna to chair two, we will have another six combinations. Anna in chair three, another six combinations, and Anna in chair four, another six combinations. There are four possible chairs for Anna to sit on, so we will have four times six equals 24. There you have it, 24 possible combinations with four people. If you do enjoy these videos, which I'm hoping you do, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell and smash that like button, and there will be plenty more videos to come. Thank you.